So uh, here, uh, okay, this, this slide ini sebenarnya uh, I've been using this slide for many time dekat uh, student punya program lah, event, and also lecture punya event. So I found that they 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 punya lacking in term of um, uh, writing ni, uh, bila narrative writing, the conjunctive ever penggunaan conjunctive ever dan juga how to start a word, how to conclude a paragraph. Uh, It's a, it's a limitation for our researcher. So eventually I have to share with them uh, ni lah all these phrases eh. So bila I bagi dia orang benda ni, uh, most of them can come up with a proper author writing. Walaupun je lah, I mean you have to go through with a pro professional provider. But still the the write up looks uh, accordingly. Maknanya dia ada uh, how they start with the paragraph, end the paragraph, jump to another paragraph, jump to another uh, subtopics eh. So this is the phrases of introduction, yeah? uh, just to share, nanti I can share the slides with, with you guys. And um, the literature, yep, you need to, it, uh, ramai yang salah faham, I mean, when you talk about literature, the editor won't want you to come up with your own word. I mean, you, you are not just reporting Ahmad kata apa, Abu kata apa, Ali kata apa. Ini uh, dalam social science, yeah? sorry ya, yeah, kepada yang SNT, I don't know, I mean, you you, you guys are much uh, simpler, even Bukan, I against you all. I I orang economics. Orang economics ni cakap very direct. Bila I masuk faculty hotel, I terkejut. Why? Because uh, they, 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 the way they write is like telling a story to a little boy. Uh, to the children. Uh, they, every time you nak you nak start with the new section, you kena reintroduce balik you punya issue. Uh, Susah lah kan. Tapi eventually this is the way of writing. I have to embrace it and I have changed it. So In term of literature, you need to be critical. You need to argue, lah, yeah. And you need to define your variables, and you need to develop your hypothesis. Ani, yang I, I'm, I'm telling you, I can see a trend right now in uh, edit, uh, sorry, uh, editor. Uh, most of these journals, they are more keen towards hypothesis development in section. They want to have that, even even though when I uh, I, I put it them together in one section. Ya yeah, dalam hypothesis uh, dalam literature they they ask me to separate it, okay? And if you have a theoretical model and hypothesis, you can you can use them to build it up. Then right now, uh, if you can see, most of the journals will ask you to uh, to draw ataupun to share your conceptual model. Uh, why? Uh, because you uh, as an as a as a PhD student dulu. Bila I baca paper, bila I nak come up with a proposal, I will always tend to search for paper yang ada framework. Because I want to adopt atau adapt the framework. So most of the papers that doesn't share their framework ataupun conceptual model will be left out from the proposal punya stages. Yeah? So again, it's a game of the editor. They want uh, students ataupun researcher citing their paper. So by having that article, dia akan lock uh, group of uh, researcher untuk fokus pada apa I mean to adapt ataupun to adopt dia punya uh, paper ya. Yeah. Okay, uh, sama juga phrases untuk review. So, yeah, we, we need to use uh, words such as several studies, researchers, the research to date. Ini, I'm, I'm telling you, ini ayat paling bahaya. I've seen a lot of papers yang bila kata the research to date has tended to focus on blah 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 blah. Masuk citation, Tahun 99, tahun 2003. When you talk about the research to date, you need to start sharing atau citing papers yang pada tahun 2019, 2019. So, I mean, you need use the correct words lah ya, eh, to support your arguments. Body methods, ah uh, ni benda paling simple, ya. Yeah. Apa di method? Di method ni, you kena introduce your research approach. Kalau qualitative, uh, yeah, then you kena clear that you are using qualitative. Kalau quantitative, what type of uh, research design are you using positivism constructivism how do you design your study cross sectional yeah? measurement ah ni ni penting ni measurement why the the the, the issue with uh, papers is that they doesn't share their punya instrument instrument lah paling banyak orang adapt kan so go for measurement yeah? go for measurement and then uh, explain type of scale likert scale 5 7 why You opt for five, why you opt for seven? Yeah? Who are your population sampling? Yeah? Um, when you talk about sampling, yeah, uh, I mean, 
at the end of the day, um, you need to be very clear with your set, uh, sampling methodology because most of the editor are very particular whether your study have no biasness. Yeah, data collection procedure, data analysis, how you test your hypothesis proposition. And please, uh, most of the editor can reject bila you start uh, writing your method, macam research method books. So please stop doing that. Just report method is a, the, the, the simplest uh, section in any papers. It's very clear, very directive. Okay, methods, yeah. yeah. So you can use the phrases. The result, uh, color quantitative, provide descriptive statistic. Why descriptive statistic is very important? Many, many researchers, even students, keep on asking me. I mean, um, when they do uh, structural equation modeling, they ask me why they need to elaborate on the descriptive statistics. The, who, uh, how many male, how many female, uh, the, the um, education level, the status of merit, uh, well, the status of the respondents. While it was not, um, I mean, they are not answering any research objective or research question. The reason why descriptive statistics is very important is that the editor or the reader want to know whether your studies have biasness. And lagi lah, play if your study buat study pasal female students, tiba-tiba dalam you punya data ada male and females. So these are all the things, all the key points that the editor, reader akan baca to, to acknowledge whether your paper is good or not. Yeah? Uh, and then um, when you talk about quantitative, I mean if you're doing economics with all these uh, jargons apa, dengan all the formula, it will be very statistic based uh, right up. Tapi in social science, you need to use real world term ataupun not statistics. Yeah? And in qualitative, uh, inilah qualitative ni Dr. Norul, orang quality dia tahu lah, tak tahu betul tapi on qualitative ni you must have a very good grasp in uh, writing eh? and you are telling a story. Yeah? So uh, you need to explain um, how you 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 have uh, M Okay, uh, quite big numbers of data or information, then you want to put it in section or in team. So you need to prepare and explain it properly. And in qualitative studies, banyak yang suka you report the verbatim. Verbatim punya uh, communication. Because they want to see that's the element of qualitative. Okay. Uh, and discussion and conclusion is the most important. You need, you need to state whether yep, have been have your hypothesis been supported or your proposition or do you answer your research question for qualitative yep interpret your your result yeah? you need to start i mean in in finding you can just report but in discussion you need to start citing balik literature yang you kat atas tu kalau you kata okay this is where sebenarnya you play around with data yang you ada information you ada bila you got discussion you report katakan bahawa there is a positive uh, relationship between A and B and this finding is in line with siapa yang cakap dekat literature dekat atas tu so you start kata oh, then the, the 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 statement is strong and so rather than that uh, tak boleh lah dia, dia, dia tak kena kalau without the supporting evidence eh? and you need to acknowledge limitation uh, limitation ni uh, tak perlu banyak I mean satu dua I mean dia kata macam, I mean, I always joke with my student, uh, kena beritahu yang kita ni tak sempurna. Macam mana hebat pun your study, I mean, very, oh, your study very thorough, very clear, very meticulous. Still, you need to tell them, you need you need to tell the reader that there are limitation. So, this limitation are the things that actually cannot cannot make your study sempurna. And you need to highlight on the future research. But eventually, if you start citing papers, from apa, uh, the recent research, you can see, you can always apa, use uh, their input to support your arguments. And last but not least is conclusions. And conclusion to support your, apa, to close up your write-up. Okay. Last, habis dah. Paper dah siap dah semua. Introduction sampai conclusion. Apa next? What next? Article title. Ah, Ini bak ramai yang Uh, researcher, dia dah start buat title atas lah. Sebenarnya title yang you buat di atas tu, we call it working title. So, article title dia ada tiga jenis. Declarative, descriptive or interrogative. 
Declarative, you terus katakan, oh, contohnya macam tajuk sekarang ni yang guna, COVID-19 increases travelers need for proper sanitation and hygiene. Clear. So, barangnya study you cerita pasal uh, apa nama set apa isu ni lah. Tapi kalau deskriptif, uh, kita gunakan the effect of, the impact of. And interrogative ni, kita gunakan question marks. Uh, question mark ni adalah antara uh, type of um, study yang uh, barulah. I mean the way eh. I just want to share ada satu study sekejap eh, kalau ada lah eh. Ah ni. This is nampak tak ni? This uh, this uh, title uh, dia pakai term apa kanak-kanak ah. Eh. Ah ni ni orang Malaysia saja ni. I think, I think saya siapa ya tapi ramai dah guna mirip-mirip on the wall ni kan. Well, um, so one kind of title yang mungkin catchy yang menyebabkan orang nak baca yeah? but interactive title is getting acceptance yeah? by most of the general editor abstract, ha, ni abstract pun uh, something yang uh, penting yeah? because uh, as a managing editor bila saya dapat artikel yang submit ke journal saya apa yang saya baca title, abstract from the abstract, they throw transpired the quality of the paper, the quality of the write-up and the not the, the uh, how well the research has been done. Uh, because abstract ni is an executive summary of your your study. So, um, you abstract kena tanya, you can cerita what has what was done, what uh, how, why kena buat, how, what was found and what is the significant of the finding. Ataupun the easiest way is, you kena ada lima point. Kalau emerald, ya, uh, kalau kita uh, hantar jenis biasa, abstract ni kita compile dia sekali ya. Tapi uh, kalau macam emerald, dia ada bagi segregations of uh, apa, section of abstract. Uh, so, you kena clear. So, paper abstract kena terus directive. Um, okay, researchers. Tak payah dah, dah nak guna tourism. Macam saya guna contoh saya punya area. Tourism is the, the top, uh, the top apa, sorry. Sekejap mana dia dia orang masuk ni. Okay. So, jangan guna dah start abstract awak dengan uh, tourism is the best, apa, is a top uh, income earner. Tu semua tu ayat-ayat yang perlu berada dekat introduction. Dalam abstract terus je, the aim of this paper, this paper aims, ataupun start dengan isu. COVID-19 make uh, tourism, apa, apa, COVID-19, uh, apa, what you say, you can say, uh, when we talk about COVID-19 ni, um, uh, change the way people travel. Ha, start dengan ayat tu. Mana isu? This paper aims to explore apa the motivation of uh, apa outbound traveller post COVID-19. Ha, so very direct. Terus saya tahu dah. Aim, objective. Scope. This study uh, interview. Siapa? Scope of the research. Ha. Describing the method. This study adopted ataupun this study um, uh, use uh, SEM, use uh, apa thematic analysis summarize what are the findings and then terus conclude or biasanya banyak orang kata uh, the discussion and the limitation have been explained in the paper. Terus direct. Very short. Nice. Dan the keywords. Ha, ini ada benda yang penting. Kenapa? Ramai orang salah faham. Macam mana cara nak go for keyword? I know you have uh, many way of coming with keyword. The, the, the easiest way is to look at your topic. You terus ambil topik you tu, what are the keywords, susun mengikut alphabetical order. Terus. Because why keywords is very important? Keywords ni yang dia letak dalam bila uh, publishers publish dekat online, dia akan letak this uh, keyword dalam SEO. Uh, SEO ni is a search engine optimizer. Uh, dia bila orang search for tourism, dark tourism, apa tourism management, dia terus keluar. Kalau boleh dia akan terus keluar paper you. So, you need to make sure that your keywords are very unique. Okay. Then, lepas dah habis buat keyword semua, kena polish the paper. I'm sorry to say, even saya baca, saya dah buat, I mean, I have been doing papers banyak. Tapi bila bila saya habis, saya memang tahu bahawa saya kena hantar. I need to send my paper for my other colleague untuk baca. Another pair of eyes, bagus. Uh, try to do that. That's why I cakap bila you as a researcher, you need to work in team. So, bila you buat paper, you you share your paper kat orang lain. Orang lain yang ada, dia, dia nampak dia, because everybody have different school of thought. Cara belajar. Lain. 
guru berlainan uh, and we are not asking them to comment on the preferences of writing well, kita nak tengok ada tak salah-salah yang kita tak nampak and uh, trust me trust me walaupun saya ni macam dah banyak berpaper tapi bila saya hantar akan kawan saya banyak salah yang dia orang nampak so do that okay prepare the paper well check the english ah uh, ni satu benda i would like to uh, highlight okay uh, you need to understand as a researcher um, we are not born as a researcher uh, dan as a as a researcher kita kena ada satu nilai ataupun satu ada nilai yang you kena ada you kena tahu your limitation so if you know that your limitation is writing i mean, I mean so tak payah nak usaha sangat on writing tu quality tu dah buat paper dah memang proper ikut the procedure the process terus hantar kepada proofreader because bila you tahu your limitation you you, you doesn't spend more time and you will be more efficient uh, tak payah pening oi oh, banyak ramai lagi masuk ni Okay, so again saya kata kalau you tahu you punya limitation is English tak I'm not I mean sell it for proofreading. Kenapa saya kata pertama? Pertama you be more efficient. Maknanya you spend more time uh, more time doing other things daripada you focus on English. Lah. Bila you hantar kena reject you duk baca lagi betulkan lagi lah. Duk guna Grammarly, duk guna Gingerly lah. Ini semua these two software memang membantu tapi sebenarnya they just check on the grammar bukannya on the structure of the writing. So you need you need I mean I mean I terus I mean, I mean right now I punya plan is bila I siap je I hantar to for proofreading. Tapi I punya proofreading tu tak ada lama sangat. I mean okay lah ya. So, kenapa I kata first efficient yang kedua from the proofreading I learn a lot on how to write. Bila I dapat balik uh, komen dengan all these uh, apa um, reviews ya, yeah, komen-komen diberi tu track changes tu. So, I nampak oh ni cara salah I. So, from there I belajar. Maknanya you invest duit untuk bagi paper you cantik at the same time you belajar on how to write good paper. Dan usually I akan hantar kepada uh, editor-editor suat khabar. I tak hantar pada cikgu-cikgu. Uh, I tak hantar pada TESOL student. TESOL student dia very rigid on uh, grammar. Tapi kalau editor suat khabar, uh, siapa-siapa yang suka writing ni, dia orang very focus on the flow of the story and using the right term. Oh, very good. You try to do that. Yeah, okay. So, um, okay. Kenapa saya kata language is very important? Ini adalah artikel student saya yang dihantar dan um, bila dia hantar tu dia memang dapat desktop research, des desktop uh, rejection. Dan uh, I jumpa dengan this uh, editor masa dia orang bagi talk. And this dia punya dia punya dia punya verbatim punya segmen ya. Eh. Tourism management Q1. Dia kata dia baca paper ni senang dia kata dia, dia takkan spend time nak memahami apa yang cuba tu cakap dia kata. Ya kalau dia hantar benda yang tak elok dia terus reject. Oh jangan ingat editor ni baik sangat. Editor ni pun dia ialah manusia kan. Tapi dia kata kalau dia kata dia nampak je paper ni tak ada quality doesn't have any quality that stand out tak ada benda yang stand out dia terus reject. You know tourism management are handling more than 1000 submission per year. So dia dia tak ada masalah dengan paper. So eventually from that 1000 tu dia cuma publish like dalam uh, satu lebih je. So you can see how quality control eh. Dan quality control tu false. The first person yang baca is the chief editor. Yang kedua, journal of travel research dia kata my rule of thumb if there are more six grammatical error in the abstract. Dalam abstract je dia terus tak payah baca dah. So that's why I cakap you first language is very important and abstract is very important. Because these are the two factors that will Uh, um, kata, um, effect uh, di perjalanan your paper tu if you if you uh, go to your website properly your language is good eventually your paper akan dihantar ke reviewer dan jarang sekali paper yang accepted by the chief editor bila send to reviewer akan reject jarang sekali paling orang kata I mean teruk pun dia bagi uh, major uh, major tu dah kira accepted lah kan so you need to start to play with that. Okay. Polishing, uh, re-read, macam mana saya, okay. Sorry. Okay, the, and the final checks again lah. Okay. That's it. Okay. Uh, before kita move on, I would like to 
uh, open for question. Anybody would like to ask questions? Okay. Um, oh, banyak soalan ni. Dr. Ted. Okay, first author dan second author untuk artikel yang dibuat bersama pelajar. Okay, ini saya akan sentuh nanti Dr. Ted. Nanti kita akan bincang balik ya. Eh. Just remind me back. Okay. Um, what is your opinion about self-citation? Is it unethical or likewise? Okay. Self-citation ni, I mean, um, eventually, uh, memanglah uh, unethical. You pun dia boleh cite suka-suka hati nama you. Unless you are doing something that are related with your paper. Ah, itu tak, tak adalah masalah unethical. Let's say I'm doing study on um, dark tourism and then tiba-tiba I cite paper berkenaan ekonomi. It doesn't make sense. Just a matter of just nak, nak I would say, not push up your citation count, then then the unethical, self citation, memang uh, unethical, selalunya, yeah? unless you are adopting your paper. Make sure that the ability you cite your article, you are actually citing your article properly. So uh, yeah, we have cases. Yeah, we have cases that uh, dalam paper depa tu uh, sampai lima enam paper yang yang berbeza under the same author. Yeah. But at the same, uh, well, I've been doing the same thing. I mean, I, I have been citing my paper because uh, eventually apa yang kita buat ialah uh, most of our recent research is based on our previous research. So the groundwork that have been done in our previous research. So bila kita cite our previous research, tak ada masalah. Because we are, I mean, we are just enhancing our previous research. So I hope that's clear. Eh? Okay. Um, ah, yeah, Dr. Hyrule punya artikel. Yep. Okay, uh, Dr. Hafiz, we, do we have official proof? Okay, I know that you right now, ramai yang nampak dalam Facebook, produk Dr. Rozia Janu, dia hantar RTS. Uh, RTS punya app tu, so, ada empat orang uh, profesor yang memang kita letak untuk dia orang baca. I just want to be very clear. I've been using their services. They are very good. Cuma, they are not proof reader. They are content reader. Uh, the one ni is like a pair of, apa, another pair of eyes. Jangan expect dia orang nak proofread your article. Kan? Proofreading are services and uh, it is very costly. And they are doing it for free. So the RTS uh, platform tu is not actually uh, a proofreading platform. It's actually just uh, the way how you item help for you to enhance your paper accordingly. Yeah? Okay. Um, but slide saya akan share nanti. Salam doktor, can we resubmit rejected journal to the same journal? Ah, ini nanti saya share. Saya tak pernah resubmit uh, journal to the same journal. Apa yang saya buat, this is another tips. Saya, saya biasa ni, inilah apa. Kawan saya selalu kata ni, saya ni pasal ada keturunan uh, mamak ni. Dia kata, apa, perangai-perangai tu ada lagi tu. Nak, nak go for the best. So biasa bila saya buat paper, saya hantar kat Q1. Saja je. You know why? Kenapa saya hantar kat Q1? Uh, I learned this masa my, my PhD. I learned this masa my PhD. Bila I buat my proposal, my supervisor ni dia 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 argue legitimate the, the legitimacy of my problem statement. My issue betul ke ni kan? So I kata okey lah because my supervisor pun bukan my area. My second supervisor are very economic based. So I what I did said I potong my my problem statement tu. And then I send to uh, Q1 punya journal, Tourism Economics. Uh, dalam masa du- tiga minggu, empat minggu, dia hantar balik laporan dengan komen. So dengan komen tu apa yang saya buat ialah saya betulkan balik saya problem statement and then I use dan uh, rezeki saya, dia accept with major correction. So with that, I gunakan that 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 comment yang mengatakan bahawa oh paper ni betul semua ni the framework looks nice tapi kena ada adjustment dan saya gunakan ni untuk argue dengan saya punya supervisor after that bila I buat paper I send it to Q1 senang je I tahu bila I hantar ke Q1 either desk rejection ataupun dia review the best thing is that Q1 Q1 journal dia punya reviewer quality memang tinggi dia orang memang orang kata people in that area So when I get the comment, dia reject, I tak ada masalah. I nak comment for free. Bukan senang nak dapat orang comment for free. Kan? Dan comment ni very uh, constructive. 
So bila I baca tu, I tengok dia punya komen, I betulkan paper I semua Ni rejected eh, paper rejected, I betulkan komen, ikut dia punya komen I hantar dekat journal lain ha, Bila I, kita, maknanya paper kita tu kita dah enhance dan kita hantar kat journal lain Ya, yeah? so nanti I akan tunjuk ada ada satu paper ni saya hantar kat tujuh, tujuh journal ha, Baru dia accept, tapi bila I tengok balik daripada original First version of that paper sampai ke version ke tujuh dia dah jadi lain lah. Totally different with all the good inputs dengan susunan yang betul. So, you know, this is the process of learning. Uh, so, I mean, yelah, I mean, I nak suruh my my supervisor baca, dia ambil masa sampai lima, enam bulan. So, better I send to journal. Memang kita tahu dah, memang kualiti yang bagus. But, uh, I jarang lah hantar balik ke journal yang reject. I macam kata merajuk lah eh. Oh ni cerita pasal PhD nanti kita boleh uh, cerita nanti lah ya eh. uh, uh, after this kot sekejap ya eh. Your entire screen sekejap Okay kita sambung sikit lagi Terima kasih lah untuk bersabar dengan saya ni Okay now kita nak submit uh, Ni dah sampai tahap nak submit ni dah tak sabar ni So bila dah submit the paper Zaman dulu Zaman dulu susah nak submit paper Zaman sekarang senang sangat You know why? Those days bila you want to submit paper, first thing that then you kena submit through email. Second, most of the journal, dia minta you format paper ikut accordingly dengan dia punya format. Jenuh. I mean, I mean you need to be very good. Copy apa, kita copy, paste special, unformatted tag, oh lari pula table, table cara lain and then we are not yet uh, talking about uh, citation style. Ada yang guna APA, tiba-tiba guna Harvard. Nanti I share with you, punya pening kepala, paper accepted, tiba-tiba citation tu ada dekat uh, 80 citation I kena ubah daripada EPA kepada uh, Harvard style Dan tak pakai pula endnote student saya tu, ha, ni semua benda-benda yang kena clear I mean, I'm, I'm, I I always push my student guna endnote ataupun Mendeley Dia ada gil macam mana pun, I, I memang akan paksa because Dia menyenangkan hidup saya bila I nak potong that paper, bila I copy that area paste dekat uh, apa a blank word punya dokumen dia terus bawa citation style dan bila nak tukar I can just tukar kepada Harvard ke APA very easy so kalau boleh siapa-siapa yang start doing PhD start using EndNote or Penelay EndNote ni memang dia kena bayar tapi uh, library bagi free you pergi download daripada link library tu dia bagi free Mendeley memang free okay bila you want to submit the paper uh, you can check First, itulah citation ya. Eh. Ah, pakai Harvard ke, PA ke. Word limit, very important. Why? Because ada setengah journal, dia very particular. Like extra limit je, you kena bayar. Ah, tak bayarlah kan. Ah, single, double blind review. Ah, ni single blind, double blind. Ya. Yeah. Um, single blind maknanya uh, you tak tahu siapa review, tapi review tahu siapa you. Double blind, you tak tahu review pun, pun tak tahu. Uh, biasa banyak most of the top jenis guna double blind lah supaya tidak ada biasness mana tahu dia, dia, dia ada reviewer tu ada grudge dengan UITM ke UITM tak tak sambung kontrak ke apa pak hantar paper you terus dia reject sorry lah saja melawak ya but that's actually the reason why people go for double blind review ya ah uh, ni copyright material uh, for social science ni banyak duk ambil uh, kalau yang biasa isu dia is map lah ha, Bila dia buat study pasal case study dia ambil maps So map ni kena lah tulis source daripada mana Source ni daripada google ke daripada website ke kan Daripada buku so kena clear ya eh? Okay So full article Kenapa kenapa Okay bila you come up with that ni You ada satu file Now you kena pecahkan you punya article tu kepada lima jenis file Pertama mesti ada full article Article with author's information Sekali dengan acknowledgement. I need Prof Nazib kalau dia ada ni dia, dia memang sokong ni. Apa link you apa dia letak attachment artikel you tu dengan grant dengan UITM letak je. Uh, dan ada soalan ni tadi tanya pasal kalau kalau student under FYP. Okey, isu dia kadang-kadang banyak kita kita tengok budak-budak student kita buat paper. Uh, kita suruh waktu final year project ni ada tiga group dia orang buat pasal uh, review So eventually kita akan guna kerja-kerja dia orang ni Dan ramai tanya, 
kalau kita guna kerja dia orang ni adakah kita kena letak nama dia orang kalau you ambil accept yang bukannya sepenuhnya you ambil accept daripada kerja dia orang tu tak ada masalah eh you you can cite them ada ataupun dekat acknowledgement you can just acknowledge dia punya contribution thank you to my student bla 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 for helping me apa-apa untuk dapatkan teacher tidak ada sebarang masalah full article tu kena proses pada blind article maknanya kita kena buang authors information semua save it as blind article ni ni file file name ya eh? blind article lepas tu you kena ada authors bio authors bio ni make sure you, you letak nama-nama semua author tu sekali dengan email why sekarang ni banyak gunakan di uh, manuscript central uh, bila you nak masukkan nama researcher dia suruh you register dekat researcher so you kena ada email dia so authors bio kena ada dan short bio ya eh? kena ada short bio lah buatlah apa very short one. highlights ini pun banyak yang Q1 uh, atau Q2 journal banyak tanya dia suruh you letak point dalam 5 6 point apakah highlight of your study ha, ini macam apa point lah point for editor and then cover letter Cover letter is very important. Ha, tapi cover letter ni tak perlulah pada pening. Ada satu contoh template, ha, ambil copy, tukar je nama jenis bila nak hantar. Yeah? Because why? Uh, this is your statement from author kepada editor. And you also can suggest potential reviewer kalau you nak. Yeah? And cover letter, um, ni contoh saya buat pakai uh, apa? Pakai lo, apa? Pakai letterhead faculty. Yeah? Ataupun boleh pakai email saja. Ha. So apa yang saya letak ni? Ni saya submit tajuk apa? Okay <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. And then kita ada uh, maknanya my script ni dah all author dah letak dalam tu. Itu penting tu. Benda benda tu. Kalau oh, jangan nanti ada penambahan penukaran author. So, yeah. Tafiz, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Boleh uh, kembali dua slide yang belakang? Ni. Thank you. Kejap eh. Okay. Is it this? Uh, yes, this, yes tadi yang belakang. Sebelum kamu. Ah this one. Nak nak tahu dia punya main content dia. Okay. Oh okay. Thank you. Tak apa nanti I, I will share, I will share the the slide, don't worry. I bukan ini simpan slide, ambil lah. <laughs> okay tadi nak, nak follow your train of thoughts on the ni. Okay thank oh, you. Okay. Alright. So cover letter ni ramai yang kata macam tak penting. Sebenarnya cover letter lah yang paling penting because the first thing yang uh, editor baca is cover letter. Uh, and then uh, tengok lah ada kalau I mean uh, old school of thought dia boleh cerita, dia briefly explain pasal you. Tapi tak payah dah because apa, you dah ada you punya satu dokumen cerita pasal author bio tadi tu, tak payah dah. Uh, dan uh, it just orang kata um, a professional way of submitting a paper maknanya dengan cover letter ya. Eh. Okay, this is a cover letter saya pakai soft copy ni. Ada paper, ada yang pakai email ya. Eh. And submission submission time kita boleh ada yang pakai email, ada yang pakai online submission. Ada yang pakai OJS ada yang pakai manuscript center. Macam ni ha, Emerald ni dia pakai uh, manuscript center so you can log in dan password semua ada dalam sini. Okay. Uh, let me share kalau boleh share. This is actually a, a journal eh. Uh, yang mana ini masalah journal Emerald. Uh, selalu saya selalu saya nampak so, oh, bila seorang student cari kan dia kata tak jumpa lah cik mana nak, nak submit. Pasal uh, very complicated. Ini pun saya dah pernah suara kepada Emerald. Mana nak publish ni? Kat mana ni? Ni volume. Ni dia punya ni. Dan start sini. Write for this journal. Tekan sini dia terus buka kepada dia punya mana ni? Oh dah tak keluar dah pula dah. Let's see tourism Elsevier. Ni Emerald. Uh, Emerald tadi ya. Eh. Macam tadi. Uh, ni uh, Elsevier. Elsevier macam ni pula. Sama tak? Dia akan highlight the summit your paper. Dan Emerald menggunakan different type of uh, dia panggil apa? Evice eh? Dia punya apa platform. Okay. So uh, what happen next? Uh, ni yang kita nak clear. Bila kita dah submit. ya, yeah? Bila kita dah submit. Now you need to wait. Uh, ini yang selalu jarang orang kata uh, bila jumpa ada I remember ada satu question been asked to Prof Dwi Suhardanto. Uh, ini lecturer daripada uh, profesor dari Indonesia dia kata La, uh, tahun 2019 uh, 2019 dia publish 12 paper. So that's one uh, one staff tanya, "Oh, maknanya every month you publish one lah." Uh, salah faham tu. Bila you submit paper, 
bukan in one month siap dah semua it takes uh, many months sometimes years eh, to publish so ibaratnya kalau Dewis, Prof. Dewi Sultan tu publish tahun 2018 12 paper maknanya dia dah submit paper yang 2018 tu pada tahun 2017 tak tak awal tahun eh? so and 2019 dia publish maknanya dia publish dia dah start writing maknanya you kena keep on you kena ada macam apa nama stock of papers yang you dah tunggu dah Uh, yang mana paper yang dah disubmit, mana paper yang tengah correction, mana paper yang tengah buat kena ada benda tu eh? uh, bila you dah submit, you kena, you, dia akan hantar kepada editor, editor akan baca ni saya tengok ya, contoh dia review process yeah? ni ini single blind, author tak tahu tapi reviewer tahu ini ini jenis-jenis uh, macam jenis-jenis uh, UITM, uh, kita mungkin gunakan uh, single blind yeah? tapi most of the top journal, they go for double blind Maknanya, author tak kenal siapa reviewer, reviewer tak kenal siapa author Tak tahu pun paper tu datang daripada negara mana Unless lah topik you tu tulis nama Malaysia Tapi kalau uh, Sorry, kalau uh, tak ada maknanya reviewer tu tahu paper mana ni datang daripada, daripada negara mana So inilah yang paling, I mean the best option Because uh, the biasness tu kita dah limit eh Ha, ini lagi lah, ada yang double blind editor buat tahu maknanya bila you hantar, tu dah kadang-kadang kita tak faham uh, the process, bila you hantar ke online submission the first person yang handle tu sebenarnya bukan editor, the first person yang handle your paper maybe the apa kerani dia je, As, apa, dia punya staff dia saja dia yang akan check dulu, uh, complete tak dokumen um, Cukup tak uh, maklumat yang diperlukan, uh, author semua dah complete ke apa, baru dia akan hantar pada editor In which editor pun doesn't know where does this paper from Yang yeah, ni, this is the best option lah I mean eventually, um, uh, bukan apa, I mean you know uh, All these corpus journal, they want ada macam quota, they want to get international papers, uh, local papers um, So, kalau without this uh, blind review ni, I mean they can be selective yeah? Okay, so the few, uh, the peer review process, you will hantar editor scheme Dia akan hantar pada handling editor Okay, dan dia akan hantar pada peer reviewer Journal sekarang dia dah pandai, dia bukan hantar pada seorang dua, dia hantar kepada lima orang Dia tahu dalam lima orang tu adalah seorang dua yang pemalas ha, Tak jawab kan? So, uh, I can see the trend right now uh, Dalam tahun 2019-2020 ni, they start Uh, I'm start getting review daripada 2-3 orang Maknanya bukan limit daripada 2 orang Dulu dia orang pilih the best top 2 Now dia hantar je uh, I even pernah terima just to share to you 3 reviewer, satu reject Nombor 2 uh, major, nombor 3 minor uh, Macam itu punya tahap dia punya nak very ni Very uh, kata tara eh So kalau manager reject, daripada screening dah reject dah You nampak tak? Haa uh, Okay, kalau dia dekat handling editor reject, dia patah balik Kalau peer review uh, kata reject, dia reject Tapi kalau dia accept, maknanya ada apa? Kena buat correction, major, minor So, author akan amend, author akan copy editing And then manuscript accepted, barulah dia publish Kalau dalam, uh, kalau ada emerald uh, the Proses daripada accept Maksudnya dah lepas sambil buat correction semua, dah accept Kepada publication pun, it takes few process copy editing, final uh, apa uh, photo ready document you kena review balik dan lepas tu baru you publish ok responding to editor, ha, ni, ni, ni benda yang mungkin I think good for you eh how to respond ya, tadi kata ada there four possible outcome, dash reject conditional accept with major revision conditional accept with minor revision accept without change, ha, ini tuan-tuan dan perempuan sekalian ini dewa-dewa Uh, orang kata dewa-dewa dia dapat accept without change <laughs> Biasanya kita akan dapat conditional accept with minor ataupun major Ini dua, kalau you dapat dua ni, ini berita baik Ini boleh kenduri uh, kambing, ini boleh kenduri lah ayam masak merah Kalau dapat ni, maka tak apa Kalau dapat dapat keputusan ni, ambil lah sehari untuk bersedih Besok submit lah paper tu kat tempat lain eh? So Why they, they reject the paper? Pertama ni, ni ini bukan saya tulis ni memang kita buat <coughs> uh, round table discussion dengan uh, editor-editor di uh, QS Sarawak itu eh 
AQS uh, ranking Sarawak punya conference. So ini actually I I met with Prof uh, Stanislav Ivanov European Journal of Tourism. Pertama dia tengok aim scope. Yang ada yang tak kena. Ha, ni masalah tourism. Tourism ni masalah dia besar. Pasal dia ada hospitality and tourism. American anggap hospitality tu ialah tourism. UK tak anggap hospitality tu tourism. You kalau UK hospitality tu hotel. Ha. Pening kepala. So bila kita hantar paper tourism ke general hospitality UK, pop dia, dia reject. Article type. Ha. So adakah dia just a reporting ataupun is a right is a public apa article right article publication. Uh, banyak student kalau you ambil lah student punya final year project you hantar memang dia reject because most of our student ni dia tak critical. Dia just report saja. Lang, ada yang too long, ada yang too short, ada yang ha, sampai 20 ribu patah-patah kan. Siapa nak baca tu kan. And then you tak follow the instruction to author. Ha, itu penting. Language, ha, nampak tak language uh, keep on popping up lagi. Originality, contribution. Dia bukan original. Doesn't mean you kena paper you tu is the only one yang buat dalam dunia tapi contribution tu kena original application boleh tak diguna di mana siapa yang kena pakai you kena clear you know, tadi method uh, method kena follow the process tak boleh jump tiba-tiba sample uh, sampling method salah eh? uh, presentation uh, proof it apa tak presentation masih lagi dengan language and also ethical issues uh, ni bila dia nampak you ada cuma ada satu single citation nampak sangat yang you tak buat homework you. Bila you buat literature, kenapa yang kedekut sangat dengan citation? Kalau you bagi strong statement, you katakan bahawa apa, contohnya travel behavior can apa are affected by many uh, many, many elements uh, such as blah 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 blah. Tiba-tiba ada satu je citation, Ahmad 2012. You dah kata dah many dan banyak orang buat study pasal tu, you letaklah Ahmad Ali Abu 2016, 2017, 2018. From there, uh, bila editor baca, editor nampak, oi, dia ni dah review Ahmad Ali Abu ni semua. Dan inilah dia punya finding. Dia, I mean, dia punya justification kenapa study tu kena dibuat. So, be very clear. I mean, banyak student yang kata, pasal saya kata, you kena cut dengan you punya citation. Yeah, there's a there's a way to cite paper. Tapi, I mean, bila you put that, itu lebih pada thesis writing, bukan article writing. Artikel writing dia tak tahu Ahmad Abu Ali cakap apa berbeza. Dia tahu apa persamaan Ahmad Abu Ali, apa apa perbezaan antara Ahmad Abu Ali. Itu dia tak tahu. Okay. Uh, uh, major and minor revision. Major. The manuscript akan dipublish dalam jurnal. It will be. Don't worry. But there is a significant changes yang you kena buat. Yeah. Minor revision, dia akan publish uh, lebih cepat dan hanya few elements yang you kena betulkan. Okay, I'm going to share to you. Okay, um, okay. Bila you respond to reviewer, okay, you boleh, you can disagree. Uh, I've been doing that. Ada reviewer yang tiba-tiba review kata, oh, this uh, apa, this uh, framework are not um, are not up to date lah apa semua. Tapi kalau you rasa, I mean, your your framework tu terhadap, you kena jawab. Ni macam viva lah. Cuma in writing. So you jawab dia, uh, this uh, Uh, framework have been developed based on siapa Ahmad punya paper, Ali punya paper and have all apa, together they claim that they propose this type of, uh, uh, these are the variables of the framework. Clear cut. Biasa editor agree, don't worry, they are also academician. You need to spell it out apa yang you, uh, you nampak, apa yang you comment, you can spell it out dan don't forget to make changes. Clear, clear. Okay, apa yang saya buat ialah, okay, Uh, ini rule, uh, ini rule biasalah Be polite, janganlah Kalau orang tu puji, balas balik Thank you for the compliments ha. So no apa, uh, Review tu baca kan so, Kalau salah, accept the blame Itu, there, There's a lot of missing uh, apa References Bila you check, memang betul Banyak refer, oh, sorry I'm so sorry, my mistake, thank you to, um, For acknowledging that uh, I already made changes, I already Added the missing, ah uh, clear cut Uh, make the response self contain respond to every point jangan tinggal ya yeah. um, ya yeah, when possible do what the review has kalau boleh lah ya yeah. okay so bila handling revision dah buat dah jangan jangan take time because now you dah tahu dah paper you accepted relax cool take time jangan nak push because apa you kena faham bahawa katakan you dapat paper you bulan 
uh, you dapat uh, result of your review tu bulan 4. You pulun buat dalam masa 2 hari you buat correction you dah hantar. Your paper will not publish in January uh, in June. Uh, that's why you kena you kena be well versed dengan journal. Journal ni publish satu isu ke setahun, dua isu ke setahun, kalau empat isu setahun. Kalau dia publish dua isu setahun, kalau paper you been accepted apa been accepted with correction pada April, it will not be published in June. So relax. Buat, ambil lah sebulan. Uh, June, July, uh, July tu baru hantar balik. Because you know that bila you hantar July, the editor have time to read through, to mungkin nak uh, revise lagi sekali ke, ataupun mungkin nak to accept dan dia kena hantar pada publication team. Publication team lah yang buat apa all this formatting semua ni. Dan barulah baru 12 dia hantar. Dia dia publish paper you. So uh, kalau yang empat, empat kali setahun tu, ah, dia tengok tarikh dia. Uh, so kalau you faham tu, you tahu bila you kena hantar. Okay. Okay. Ni contoh. Macam mana saya respond to review comment. Uh. The manuscript offers a comprehensive literature survey that has enough merit uh, for being published. Ini adalah sebenarnya paper pertama yang saya publish dekat uh, Scopus Journal which is my PhD uh, proposal lah. Ini yang saya kata major, major correction. Uh, the authors draw possible conclusion as far as the status quo of TDC research. Ini dia puji ni. Dia puji, kita pun kenalah acknowledge pujian dia. Eh? Uh, tapi ingat dia buka dia puji nombor satu, nombor dua dia terus sentam kita. There is a misunderstanding, they get cause and effect, bla 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 bla. Nampak tak? So apa saja jawab, the author agrees. Salah. The article has been rewrite. There is nothing new in model, in figure bla 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 bla. The model had been removed. Further discussion is needed. The author had expanded the discussion focusing on the relationship. The literature review was has value. The authors agree. The whole paper need careful editing and stuff. Nampak tak? Ini, nombor tujuh ni, macam mana, macam mana pun you akan terima kat this comment. Uh, so, kena tulis lah the paper had gone through. Dia nak statement ni. And the best part, bila you deal with this, uh, I mean sorry to say, bukanlah kata nak, I mean this uh, European ataupun American punya style, they, they, they want to memang go with trust. Dengan bagi statement ni, tanpa you bagi bukti pun dia dah trust yang baru you dah hantar paper ni untuk proper proofing. Uh, so kalau you rasa ni janganlah, janganlah mengguna apa kata, take advantage on that. Hantar proofing tapi you make sure you put this uh, in statement. So biasanya all this editor dia akan accept this as uh, proof that you already send it for proofing. Okay. So style typo, nampak tak? Dia puji sekali, dia, dia kutuk banyak kali ni. Kan? Uh, ini paper PhD saya ni bayangkan. Tapi, uh, I mean they accept with major correction. Okay. Okay, so um, ethical. Uh, macam mana? Okay, sorry. Before kita kata ethical ni, how to, how to, how could you ethically increase the visibility of your paper? Nampak tak? Saya gunakan perkataan ethically maknanya bukanlah self citation. Yeah, first present your work in conference. Uh, ni, ni first lah point untuk ni. Mention your paper on uh, Twitter ke Facebook. Uh, ni banyak ni apa UITM pun kita ada banyak contoh. Saya ni kadang-kadang saya segan. Saya ni ikut pangai orang Melayu dia kuat sikit Melayu saya daripada mamak tu. Oh. So saya macam uh, segan nanti kalau kita duk share apa yang kita buat dalam Facebook tu oh, takut orang menyampah. So saya mengurangkan sikit aktiviti tu. Tak ada jugalah buat kan. Tapi sajalah. Tapi ada ramai lagi. Hmm, contohnya macam prognosis Prof. Dr. Nur Zaidi, uh, Dr. Rahim, uh, they, they want to semangat share yeah, apa yang mereka dah buat which is, which is actually good. I mean if you ask them personally, I mean I even ask them personally dan I memang follow style dia orang uh, lepas saya bincang dengan Prof. Nur Zaidi memang kesan dia banyak. Banyak orang kenal kita, banyak orang tahu pasal kita dan orang people start to uh, dig about kita. Start mencari lah, risau juga bahaya kalau ada gambar-gambar yang tak berapa baik kan tapi itulah I mean people will start to search about you dan they start to get to know to you and you will get a lot of opportunity. Ah uh, nampak tak? Ini set your paper in further publication boleh tapi with relevant it is relevant. Ya, yeah? disseminate the news through any email. Biasa sih bila saya dapat paper saya ada saya punya uh, email uh, group saya akan hantar Ya, masukkan dalam social network dan nanti saya akan tunjuk Pablons lah, apa, all these corpus lah semua ni banyak ni. Uh, dan ini yang terbaru. 
Ha, ni baru saya start tahun 2020, saya start sharing my dataset. Ha, ni you boleh buat. Uh, dataset ni Excel file tu yang uh, ataupun the apa anything, anything lah kalau you pakai uh, SPSS, SPSS, kalau you pakai Atlas CI, Atlas CI tu dia punya output tu you share. Okay. So what I did is that, ha, ni contoh, ni saya nak bagi tahu ni, ni nak, saya nak share, ni contoh tadi kata, ini paper ni, paper ICE GPA. Ha. Tahu eh, kalau, kalau siapa pelanggan pada dengar pasal ICE GPA, pasal yang apa uh, spider web tu. Nah, ni lah paper yang saya buat dengan dekan saya. Um, dia nak juga hantar pada jurnal. Ha, pasal katanya uh, HEA saya suruh hantar kat jurnal yang berindeks. So saya pun format-format hantar. Hantar kat Q1. Research in higher education. The rejected with comment. Apa saya buat dengan comment ni? Saya betulkan paper saya. Saya ikut komen dia, tapi saya hantar ke Journal of Education. Reject lagi dengan komen. Ambil komen dia, enhance lagi paper tu. Hantar kat Q2. Nampak tak? Makin lama makin merendah diri pada Q2. Q3. 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 Last kali nombor tujuh, accept the new education review. Q3, accept with my question. Ha, itulah perjalanan paper ni kan. Eh? Dan paper ni dah dipublish as GPA as interpreted criticism. That's how. Bukan ada paper yang kita hantar cepat, ada paper kita hantar lambat ya. Okay. Um, I would like to share. Um, okay. Ini contoh terbaru. Uh, paper yang uh, saya hantar. Nampak tak? Paper, uh, ni apa saya buat. Dalam setiap paper yang saya hantar tu kata paper tu paper Hafiz. Uh, ni nama jurnal. Uh, ini dia punya paper yang saya ada tu. Ada letters blind lah, cover letter. Dan ini correction. Correction yang bila kita hantar. Nampak tak? Daripada version 1 sampai version 3. So, I mean, your paper is get, is been enhanced based on the on the comments. So, dan this is the reviewer comment. Ha, macam mana saya hantar review comment. So, saya masukkan tajuk. Kalau ada paper ID, paper ID. Tapi ni tak ada. Oh, hai. Time lah. Dia nak restart. Okay. So, apa yang saya buat ialah saya buat paper, saya boleh buat surat cover letter untuk hantar correction tapi dalam dalam saya punya kita panggil review comment and action taken ni punya dokumen kita juga masukkan ha, nampak tak ha, kita kata you like to thank for the review comment the opportunity to resubmit we also like to take this opportunity to express our thanks to the reviewers we, we need to be very polite we believe the reviewers result take an improved revised manuscript uh, you can find alongside the document we are very much hope that the revised document will be accepted for publication ini dia dah accept tau sebenarnya tapi dia suruh dia. So kita buatlah review eh apa dia cakap I found this paper is officially original rich. Thank you. Ni semua saya jawab ni. Kita jawab. So apa dia kata you may add more literature review for new publication. Ha. Apa tulis? New and significant criteria have been added. Yang ini ni semuanya dah dimasuk dalam artikel original dan saya tunjuk kat dia. Ini dah yang terbaru tahun 2020, 2020. Kan? Okay. Um. Your message should be presented in an intelligible fashion and written in English. The article have been sent for professional proofreading. Reviewer C pun sama. Banyak komen ni. Ini ini baik komen dia. Belum tunjuk komen yang baca tu rasa macam tanya balik diri sendiri. Macam betul ke apa yang aku buat ni kan. So ini ha, ni dia punya komen ni. Ha, nampak tak berapa page ni? Sembilan page dia punya komen. Ada yang komen very page by page. So kita kena ikut dia. So this is the the way of how I handle. Ini tengah tunggu publication. Masih tengah tunggu publication. Okay. So okay. Before I ni dah, dah nak habis ni. Lagi sikit je lagi. Ha, semua dah tengok dah macam dah bercakap pinggang lah tu. Dah nak masak okay, semua. Okay okay. <laughs> sikit lagi sikit lagi. Okay. Ini saya saya bagi ini saya punya apa kata game untuk tahun 2019. Uh, saya dah macam orang kata cubalah ini kira macam gamble lah macam macam orang kata pergi pergi ke Genting Highland lah ni gamble. Tahun 2019 saya nak publish dalam Q1 saya kata. Okay. So what I did is that. Okay nampak ya. Eh? Untuk 2019 ini ini semua paper tahun 2018 apa saya buat 2019. Sem, ini paper um, ini paper researcher uh, PhD punya paper. Uh, ni student master by coursework saya. Ini student PhD. Uh, ini paper PhD saya. Ini uh, paper P student PhD saya. Ini paper student undergraduate FYP saya. Dan ini paper student master by coursework. 
Apa yang saya buat tahun 2016, saya kata untuk 2019 saya nak Q1. So apa saya buat, saya hantar ke Q1 semua. Tapi saya hantar tu berdasarkan dengan pengalaman yang saya dah belajar dulu-dulu lah. Yeah? Yang saya dah belajar um, uh, dah beberapa tahun buat paper ni. So saya memang nak kata saya nak hantar Q1. Saya tak nak dah main Q3, Q4 ni. I nak Q1. So what happen, memang saya hantar pada semua Q1 dan um, eventually uh, menggunakan tip-tips yang saya share tadi tu dan you can see that pada tahun 2019 ni 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sorry, uh, 5 lah, 5 paper Q1 satu paper ni, uh, bayangkan undergraduate FIP budak-budak uh, part 6 final year project saya hantar ni jurnal Malaysia ni, ni jurnal dekat Universiti Uniza Journal of Nusantara, Nusantara Studies ni dia accept, ESCI So this is the tips. You need to believe in yourself. And kadang-kadang uh, kita tak tahu because uh, we don't know our, our rezeki. Bagi saya, um, rezeki saya tahun 2019 amatlah bagus sekali dari segi publication ya. Yeah? Because semuanya, I mean bila saya hantar ni, paper ni uh, dua uh, sekali review, paper ni dua kali review, paper ni empat kali revision, paper ni Uh, dua kali revision, paper ni dua kali revision dan paper ni sekali revision ni Asian ethnicity tapi ni Q1 bukan website ni Q1 Scopus uh, seperti mana saya maklumkan saya cuma uh, untuk tourism cuma ada lapan paper je lah yang masuk itu kalau saya masuk tu uh, kalau saya buat kenduri kat UITM tu betul lah tu pasal bukan senang nak masuk uh, there's a lot of uh, barriers eh lagi-lagi papers from Malaysia ni jarang dia orang nak publish lah ya. Okay. Uh, dalam slide ni juga saya share, this ada orang kata kita panggil apa, fast reviewing journal. Ni ramai. I mean, I'm so sorry. I mean, journal ni bila publish ni dia bukannya nak cepat lambat. I tahu, I tahu ada student ada dua sebab je kenapa you nak cepat uh, paper you dipublish. Pertama, you student PhD. You nak kena capai certain KPI you untuk you boleh viva. Yang kedua, if you want to go for kenaikan bangkat. So, bila tak cukup tu, you nak cepat. You can see here, ada jurnal yang dia charge. Um, cuma, as I, I'm telling you, saya publish, ada ada publish paper dekat tempat yang terbayar. Tapi, untuk makluman, selepas dah buat tu, lepas tahun-tahun, menyesal rasanya kita bayar ribu-ribu, tapi uh, paper tu tak ada quality. So, memang since 2016, I stop uh, publishing dekat jurnal yang berbayar dan most of my papers yang saya hantar semuanya pada jurnal yang free tak ada bayar langsung even kalau tengok sini Helion ni ni Helion ni Helion ni sebenarnya jurnal yang berbayar tapi bila dia dia accept paper saya ok this is a story uh, story yang terbaru sekarang ni banyak publisher dia, dia apa yang dia buat bila you submit melalui online dan jurnal tu dia reject what they do is that Uh, there will be someone yang akan handle your paper dia akan suggest pula journal mana pula patutnya your paper been, been sent ha, ni benda yang baru, bagus sebenarnya I've been receiving this a uh, few time ada yang dia, kebanyakan yang dia hantar tu ada journal yang baru maknanya dia orang, marketing dia orang lah they want people to publish in your new journal tapi new journal ni tak berindex tapi ada juga journal yang berindex so Helion ni Helion ni sebenarnya kalau nak publish dalam RM4,800 tapi I don't know what happened, even uh, I remember bila I post this paper dalam Facebook the first person who commented adalah Prof Ramaya Prof Ramaya terus tanya, how much you pay for this paper? When I told him that I didn't pay a sense, dia terkejut Dia kata, this, this Helion ni, dia charge 4,000 plus I believe, I think right now dekat 5,000 Tapi, rupanya dia ada satu option untuk the developing countries and undeveloped countries uh. So luckily dalam Helion, Malaysia masih lagi under developing dia ada dan bila student jadi apa? Student yang jadi first author, dia terus wave that 5,000 plus or 4,000 plus tu. So eventually Helion ni publish paper saya uh, for free. Uh, well, that's uh, another option lah kalau you nak tengok eh. Okay, so ni semua ni adalah contoh-contoh ethics. Ha, ni saya, uh, I'm because saya adalah ahli RIC UITM. So I need to highlight ethics ya. Eh. Pertama, janganlah hantar paper yang sama ke few jen, apa, beberapa jenis se, apa, in, in one time. Janganlah macam tu. Hantar one by one. 
what I did is walaupun saya hantar tujuh jurnal, saya hantar kat jurnal tu tunggu dia punya review, dapat dia punya review, dia reject, baru saya akan hantar ke jurnal lain. Jangan hantar the same paper kepada dua, tiga jurnal sekali. Salah. Jangan hantar paper yang sama ni ada perangai ni. Banyak orang buat perangai ni, bukan kita, luckily bukan Malaysian. Banyak daripada all this Asian Asia lah, negara-negara Asia lain. Mereka hantar paper yang sama yang dah dipublish dan hantar kat jurnal lain. Plagiarism. Plagiarism ni, uh, we are very lucky we are, kita ada turn in. So biasanya apa yang saya buat, saya akan before, bila saya dah siap paper saya nak hantar ke proofreading, saya akan run turn it in. Bila saya run turn it in, saya print. I mean saya save the report tu dan saya hantar sekali kepada my proofreader. So mana yang nampak macam, I mean, ya, I mean, dan terlampau sangat tu, I mean, uh, either I delete atau saya minta dia untuk fair place. Uh, dan most of the time adalah writer I tak tu adalah benda-benda yang kita kita copy daripada paper kita yang dahulu ya. Data fabrication memang salah sangat. Janganlah tiba-tiba terus keluar data ataupun macam you yang tanda survey tu jangan ya. Uh, ni yang yang ni improper use of human subject and animal research ni. Uh, now kita memang galakkan you all untuk apply for Uh, research ethics yeah? Kena, uh, Dan uh, untuk social science tak ada masalah Hantar je because you akan You punya paper ni ataupun research you ni minimal risk Dan I have a case uh, One of my colleague um, Hantar paper dekat journal accepted Tapi journal tu minta the Surat uh, RIC Maksudnya surat approval RIC uh, Terus dia jam tak ada buat apa Because dia tak ada surat uh, RIC dan surat RIC ni hanya boleh dikeluarkan sebelum you menjalankan paper. Maksudnya, apa? Research. Maksudnya kalau you dah buat paper, you nak minta, tak boleh. Salah. And improper author contribution. Be very clear. Ni free riding, boncengan gratis semua ni, kalau boleh kita dah cuba elakkan lah. Everybody kena ada contribution. Eh? Kadang-kadang setengah jurnal tu, saya siap suruh kita letak nama Hafiz, apa dia buat, uh, apa content, analysis, Uh, writing, dia selalu beritahu. Nanti dia akan kira automatic 5%. Okay, uh, before kita nak ada advice, first my advice, work with others. Do not work alone. Jangan. Kena bekerja sama. Kerja bersama ya. Lepas tu, pilihlah co-author ataupun team member yang bagus. Yang betul-betul boleh ngam kepala kita. Ya. Yang mana yang boleh buat kerja ada tengah malam ke apa, itu semua tu adalah contoh-contoh team member yang amat bagus. Eh? Manage your portfolio. Uh, jangan publish uh, uh, dalam jurnal yang sama. I mean, which is good actually, tapi be, bu, bu, buka, you manage your portfolio. Portfolio ni maknanya you have different sources of publication. Develop a thick skin, journal acceptance rate 20. Itulah saya tadi, tu, 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 saya ni ada thick skin. Saya hantar kat Q1, berlagak macam power, sebenarnya tak power pun. Tapi bila kita hantar dan kita baru kita belajar, we learn, oh this is the way of how to publish in Q1. Uh, uh, publication ni dia belajar, tak boleh belajar melalui buku, dia boleh belajar melalui experience. That's why bila you want to start to publish, you kena start publish kat jurnal biasa dulu. Belajar cara revise, cara buat revision, cara communication. Lepas tu baru you upgrade, 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 upgrade. Uh, tak boleh terus. Kalau terus tu uh, banyaklah dia punya impact dia. Kena brush up writing skill, saya beritahu macam mana saya brush up writing skill saya, saya belajar daripada proofreader saya. Bila saya hantar paper kat proofreader, bila dia patah balik, saya tengok apa dia komen. Oh ni cara dia tulis, oh ni cara penulisan, macam mana dia paraphrase. Itu pun saya belajar. And, uh, so, we learn from others lah eh. Allocate time to write, kena ada kalau tidak tak boleh, memang kena ada time. Uh, dan saya punya waktu tu memang malam lah uh, untuk writing. Uh, ah, ni saya kata, ada orang tu, ni racist ni, saya kata be like Chinese Chinese bukan uh, Chinese, maknanya China Macam mana China, dia imitate, dia, dia transform to innovate So saya kata sebenarnya Bila, you, you know, this is just a story ya eh? I pernah tanya my friend, dia ni uh, belajar tak habis SPM Dia kerja tukang ketuk, uh, apa, apa, dekat kedai kereta So body yang accident tu semua dia ketuk So saya selalu tanya dekat dia You duduk sini, macam mana you belajar how to mold besi-besi kalau kereta-kereta yang baru-baru tu? You, you tak pernah pergi bin training. Dia tak pernah bin training. Dia kata, cikgu saya ialah kereta tu. Kereta yang baru datang tu, dia belajar daripada kereta yang rosak tu macam mana nak ketuk. Lepas tu baru dia belajar. So, 
apa moral of the story is that the way to learn ya yeah, kalau nak ambil konsep my friend ni ialah you tengok paper orang macam mana paper yang be accepted Q1 ni macam mana dia tulis then you start to imitate imitate bukan ni copy paste imitate oh ni cara dia buat abstract ambil ambil sebelah-sebelah kita pun tulis macam ni oh ni tapi tulis berkenaan dengan riset kita uh, macam mana dia write introduction macam mana dia tutup introduction dia macam mana dia write literature dia macam mana dia report dia punya finding so from you bila you imitate and then bila you dah pandai you dah start boleh innovate you dah boleh buat better than daripada paper-paper yang been published and then you need to be confident lah uh, confident kena tinggi kalau tidak memang tak boleh lah uh, tu saya kata tadi um, I mean at the end of the day that's how um, you can start be a good publisher uh, apa, a good uh, author atau a good researcher you need to have your confidence and confidence come with experience so let me see a uh, question yang ada lepas ni kita buka uh, for open question hmm. okay uh, um. cover letter is just like kita nak hantar pilangan yes betul cover letter ni bila editor baca dia nampak how professional are you uh. So bila dia baca tu nampak professional oh dia ni biasa buat ha, nampak tak kita je nak create impression bahawa we are uh, kata matched researcher ya yeah? um, <laughs> dewa tak nak dapat lagi selalunya reject dekat editor dengan majlis besar betul 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 uh, tapi jangan jangan terkejut ada ya yeah, paper yang being accepted uh, kadang-kadang you kena faham editor editor ni dia ada kota yang dia kena capai uh, kadang-kadang you play eh paper you ni Paper jurnal lain reject, tiba-tiba jurnal ni dia accept suka senang je Why? Because dia tak cukup paper Dia nak publish paper, that's why I cakap kat you all I mean You you, you kena try, you kena try your luck yeah? uh, Profida, banyak profida yang kita ada Tu saya kata um, There's two type of profida sebenarnya It's either dia ni memang tassel punya profida Ataupun uh, apa this um, uh, Newspaper punya editor I prefer to send my paper to newspaper editor. Why? Because they they want memang buat cerita. So dia baca English at the same time dia baca kita punya sentence structure. Uh, pernah tak you all hantar? I mean uh, I tahu baru ni uh, Oswald, Dr. Oswald ada buat writing pasal newspaper. Uh, writing. Sebenarnya kalau kita hantar paper, kalau kita write sekarang ni untuk newspaper, newspaper akan reject because the style of writing kita ni are very academic. Uh, dan journal, dia tak nak, journal editor pun dia tidak mahu artikel tu very academic uh, Kalau social science uh, Dia nak baca, orang nak baca, yelah orang nak baca uh, 10,000 patah kataan Dia tak boleh very rigid, so do go for the this type of editor ya Okay um, What was your sample size, uh, Dr. Gita? Okay, Dr. Gita <laughs> Okay, uh, my sample size, I follow the standard rule lah. Saya, kadang-kadang saya guna Christian Morgan, kadang-kadang saya guna G-Power. And uh, eventually, this is very simple. Katakan kalau pakai Christian Morgan, quantitative analysis, memang the the highest numbers of sample size is 384. Itu is for population yang lebih daripada 1 million. As long as you mencapai the minimum uh, sample size, therefore your paper tu, dah kira, your research tu kiranya... Uh, can be uh, can can reflect can be generalized but if your uh, your paper tu tak capai the minimum sample size is still publishable cuma um, your paper cannot be generalized maknanya your paper tak boleh lah nak katakan it, finding you ni can can be used in other places and can uh, the same uh, output akan berlaku di tempat lain that's how is it yeah Is cover letter a must even though not asked by the journal? Uh, yes, um, bukanlah perlu tapi biasanya saya buat uh, kalau macam online tu bila kita disuruh upload file saya akan upload blind manuscript, saya akan upload saya punya biografi, saya akan upload saya punya highlight dan saya upload the uh, cover letter tak ada masalah Okay, yes okay uh, so now we open for Q, apa? open open question lah Any question? Boleh unmute your mic dan boleh tanya terus. Okay, there's a question here. Mengat- tanya saya, oh, do you do uh, study ya, yeah, Jaya? On COVID. Okay. Um, 
ada sebenarnya uh, address to share to you uh, ni kita kena cepatlah bila-bila buat study tadi ni kena cepat cepat sedikitlah jadi daripada orang lain okey uh, i'm going to share to you uh, this is a study yang ni kalau siapa-siapa yang tengah free time ni tengah tak ada kelas ni you can do a survey je kan bukannya buat research kita buat survey ya let me share to you the what i did ini I buat simple je, buat de- dekat rumah je pakai online form. So apa yang saya buat? Ha ni. Nampak tak? Okay. So saya buat tourism business survey nak tahu apa pendapat business player, tourism business player on what to expect. So saya just uh, buat Google form, hantar kat dia orang dan saya terus buat uh, very basic analysis. Business profile siapa yang participated ha ni ah. Participation dia 233 orang daripada FMB, hotel, yep, uh, size of business, business location, business performance, tunjuk dia how much, uh, apa, how your business have performed recently, your future expectation, COVID impact, uh, ni impact on business. So, um, yep, you can do that. I mean, uh, their perception on government assistance, nampak, nampak tak ya? Eh? Kalau tunjuk tengok ni daripada 233, ada yang tak ada yang tak tahu pun pasal government ni assistance. Dan out of 233, hanya 38.7% saja yang apply. And uh, dan bila kita buat cross tabulation, uh, banyak yang tak tahu ni ah ni lah travel agency. Dan tanya dia cukup tak cukup, dia kata yes, ada yang dia no ada yang tak tahu pun I am not sure. Ya. Yep. Dan the best part is that uh, apa yang dia nak, tanya lah apa dia nak. So, I buat this uh, report and I send it to TM, to uh, Tourism Malaysia. So, that's what you can do right now lah. I mean, you can do anything yang you can do lah on your area. Tapi, I mean, this is what industry nak. So, okay. Uh, last question. May I know ni. Q banyak ni soalan ni Q. Uh, may I know how your strategy writing in order to achieve your KPI 3 to 4. Okay, KPI ni memang ditentukan oleh KTM. Kalau you nak capai KPI tahun 2020, you punya kerja dah start tahun 2019. You tak boleh uh, publish, uh, nak publish 2020 baru you start buat. So sebenarnya kalau you tengok saya, just to share, ni bukanlah, uh, ni, I mean this is my style lah ya. Eh. Okay, let me see. Okay, tunjuk. This is my, okay, ini journal saya ni. Apa, saya punya folder untuk apa yang saya, untuk paper-paper yang saya buat. Cuba tunjuk contoh macam ni, eh. journal ni, eh. macam ni. Mana yang ada, mana yang, apa, dah ada accepted tu, ada, dah saya, saya dah accepted. Mana yang tak ni, ni semua paper ni tengah dalam review proses. Ni semua yang tak masih lagi tak ada dalam kurungan tu maknanya masih lagi menunggu result. So eventually, itu yang saya nak kata, uh, bila you nak capai KPI tahun 2020, you punya kerja dah start tahun 2019. So apa yang you nak you buat sekarang, tahun ni, sebenarnya untuk mencapai KPI tahun hadapan. So you kena strategi lah apa, ada, ada one time, uh, I think tahun 2017, Uh, my paper is have been accepted uh, untuk 2017 punya uh, publication tapi I minta dia untuk untuk ex, apa untuk uh, stop dan publish in 2018. So strategy, I mean you need to make sure that oh, tahun 2018 saya dah capai satu. So that's why you can see ada setengah researcher yang tahun um, awal tahun dah ada paper yang dia publish because kenapa? Because dia dah start buat kerja setahun sebelum itu. Okey, ada lagi tak? Uh... Yes, yes. Gafiz. Ya. Assalamualaikum Gafiz. Uh, I'd like to share with uh, sure, the sure. audience and you uh, with regards to the um... Yeah, 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 sure. Yes, clear, clear. Yeah. clear. Uh, with regards to the publication, Some... yes something that you have not touched about the selection of the journal and um, it, it's come across in our experience especially when uh, because I'm, I'm one of the panels for uh, promotion eh? 
the 54 atau VK7 Kadang-kadang ada calon-calon yang long list application But when we scrutinize the uh, journal uh, Among the journal are those are uh, generic Generic journal which is I mean um, Contoh ya, yeah, kalau you dalam bidang sains eh, Dan tu bidang polimer ke, bidang uh, Apa lagi, uh, microbiology, biocomposite Kadang-kadang you memilih untuk untuk publish uh, contohnya journal of science and technology yeah? uh, journal of advanced material uh, jadi journal yang generic yang uh, uh, maksudnya mudah untuk diterima dan um, kurang mencabar ya yeah? jadi ini kita nasihatkanlah kalau boleh seperti yang Dr Hafiz suggest tadi uh, pilih journal yang really focus uh, in your area uh, And then there's something that I think uh, I would like to um, share with the audience lah, yeah. So that uh, let's focus. Contohnya kalau bidang saya lah, saya buat uh, forestry remote sensing. I will choose a journal, international journal of remote sensing and technology, which is reflected to your um, area specifically. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. Great. Thank you, uh, uh, Pranazit. Oh, uh, I mean, I agree dengan Pranazit. Um, You, you need to be selective with your journal publication. Uh, however, I also understand the limitation with uh, our multidisciplinary uh, research. Mana most of this multidisciplinary research ni rarely been accepted in um, kata, uh, journal yang very niche. So that's why there is a, 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 a possibility for you to publish in multidisciplinary. Uh, but be selective, be selective. I mean, senang cerita macam ni lah. Uh, kalau you nak tahu jenis tu quality tak quality, jenis tu tak charge. Dan dia index in scopus. No charges, tidak ada masalah. Memang dia berkualiti. Bila dia start charging saja, uh, uh, kalau charge, I mean, around 100 US dollar, 200 US dollar tu, kita boleh faham mungkin dia tak uh, generate income untuk bayar dia punya apa jenis punya expenses. Tapi bila you charge, uh, 1000 US dollar tu semua tu that are all public publisher nak make money. So bila they make money it's all about sales apa demand and supply. So you know lah I mean at the end of the day uh, they will always uh, tend to go for the apa the highest sales lah kan. So lagi banyak dia beruntung lagi banyaklah dia, dia dia akan publish lah paper tu. Baik. Ada apa soalan lain? Tapi tapi kan, uh, yes. uh, nak komen nak komen sikit apa yang you sebut tadi yang pasal um, Uh, publication fees ya. Yeah. Yeah. Ada jurnal juga yang apabila kita submit uh, dia akan bagi kita option. Kalau kita nak uh, uh, kita punya manuscript to be open access later after publication yeah, yeah. they will charge some amount of publication fees. Kalau dia nak it just uh, macam hard copy ataupun orang tak boleh access, orang kena subscribe to the library then it's where uh, yang uh, non fees punya this apply yang internal ah sorry to, sorry to say that. yeah i terlupa pasal open access kan right? so um yalah tapi i mean uh, open access is actually good i mean you i mean you buy you buy to make sure the paper been open access tapi ni satu benda lah i just share uh, sekarang ni kita are very lucky that uh, tak perlu pun kita publish uh, sorry prof bukan nak against the open access policy uh, tak perlu pun open access publication why because bila you publish uh, even um, secara biasa maknanya dia orang dia orang still control siapa boleh baca paper tu paper the soft copy tu you akan dapat dan you boleh share dekat research gate uh, research gate ni dia 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 lah satu savior kita yeah, why because dia dia orang sekarang ni tengah berperang ni uh, ada legal action antara research gate dengan publisher tapi as long as masih tak you still can share your paper dekat research gate And one thing I bagi tahu you all, eh, I started uh, uploading my papers dalam research gate in 2017 sebenarnya. All my paper pu- apa, upload dekat research gate, mana yang ada copyright tu, I click for request, ada yang mana yang free apa copyright tu, you can download for free dan uh, I can see my citation count meningkat berdadak. Uh, so, I mean, visibility of your paper is very important. Um, yelah, I mean for open access, siapa-siapa yang ada duit grant tu, gila gunakan duit grant. Tapi orang-orang macam saya ni, 
yang tak ada grant so macam Dr. Q tadi tanya apa strategi saya so saya memang I mean work together with my masters by coursework uh, my PhD student, my final year student final year student tu punya study pun memang saya jaga betul-betul I, I, I make sure dia orang punya study tu bukan setakat melepaskan batuk dari tepi tangga lah bukan setakat buat case study maknanya memang dia orang buat research betul-betul da- collect data betul-betul properly follow the process even though writing dia orang merepek, dia orang ni habis je bincang dengan dia orang, okay, saya nak you clear, clear dengan student Okay guys, I nak publish this paper, apa pendapat you all ah, Ada student yang kata, ah, tak payah cik, ambil lah cik paper ni, kami tak nak Okay, dah clear dapat verbal Kalau dia kata cik, oh saya nak you all, sebab saya nak jadi lecturer nanti, ah, tak apa, kita buat kerja sama-sama So eventually bila habis, bila habis buat paper tu, dan baru clear, siapa author first, siapa author second The best student, dia tidak ada masalah. I mean, uh, for them is just uh, to use that paper uh, for their CVs, kan? So, it's up to you, kan? Uh, how you want to play around. Pada-pada rakan-rakan yang tak banyak ada grant tu, I mean, you need to use what you have right now. Yes, any question? Okay, Dr. Wan Satirah, ya, you kata on Cambridge Uni, Oxford Uni. Sebenarnya, uh, Cambridge Uni dan Oxford uh, Press ni ada juga journal yang dia publish, uh, yang index. Tapi banyak jenjenal dia yang tak diindex. Sorry to say, uh, Malaysia ni kita pakai game indexing. So, Dr. Wan, macam mana pun you have to publish dekat Scopel lah if you want to be recognized dan mencapai KPI you. Okay, uh, for, for final, I nak share satu benda. Okay, let me share uh, last satu. I think ni boleh jadi projek untuk you all bila you all Uh, tengah berehat di rumah ni yeah. I know you are so busy Okay, let's talk about visibility Ini Ada paper pun banyak pun kalau tak orang tak nampak you, orang tak kenal you Susah juga so, The easiest way to make yourself visible ialah dengan Buat buat website sendiri So, uh, saya gunakan Wix Wix site ni, so you can publish your Apa, you boleh put everything, anything that you want Ini semua kerja-kerja yang saya buat, saya tunjuk ni tapi I want to share yang sebenarnya, you kena as a researcher Benda pertama yang you kena ada ialah you punya Google Scholar ha, Google Scholar, kena make sure Google. Ramai yang ada Google Scholar tapi masalah dia ialah dia orang tak buat housekeeping Please do housekeeping yeah. If you want you can uh, you can browse through uh, apa, Pejabat TNCPI punya website, ada portal rise tu dia tunjuk cara-cara macam mana nak buat housekeeping Yang kedua, semua uh, cara researcher kena ada research gate nah, ni, Research gate ni So research gate ni banyak ni saya dapat ni uh, You can see that you can dapat feedback, you boleh ada orang request Macam ni lah saya, saya answer question Nampak tak? Ni soalan uh, Soalan daripada research gate, dia tanya pasal Uh, PLS SEM, saya jawab dan uh, Thank you very much lah semua ni <coughs> Sorry, excuse me And then um, you need to have your pablon Siapa, siapa pernah dengar pasal pablon? Ha ni pablon, kena ada ni pablon Which is actually good Kenapa saya kata bagus? Kerana uh, pablon ni juga uh, highlight berapa banyak review yang kita dah buat ha, ni, ni pun yang baru saya start upload banyak lagi review yang tak di upload tapi dia 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 bagi tahu kita berapa banyak yang kita dah review 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 work yang kita pernah buat tu reviewing tu semua masuk dalam pablon and you kena ada orchid ID orchid ID ni kelebihan dia dia masuk dia dia combine uh, scopus dan juga web of science punya data so ini semua you boleh dapatkan dalam website ni dan juga so di scopus of the ID pun Ha, ramai tanya ni, Scopus Author ID dia. Ramai tanya, eh kenapa dia tak ada? Scopus Author ID tak boleh you buat. Scopus Author ID akan dibuat secara automatik apabila you start publish satu paper dalam Scopus Index ataupun conference. Baru dia akan buat. Okay. So, I think uh, that's all. Uh, tu saja. And uh, thank you very much uh, pada Pronazib for hosting this uh, event tomorrow for making this uh, possible event uh, it's, a, it's a very ada kata point change dekat chat box yeah. tu
ada lah satu soalan oh, ya. mencapai KPI is one of the thing but we must not forget very important to the suggestion one good question uh, uh, we're publishing in Q1, Q2 yes, yes uh, this is the, the most important thing kenapa dia semakin tinggi Q1, Q2 tu semakin bagus why? the, the visibility and the brand of this Q1 and Q2 journal lebih bagus daripada journal-journal yang biasa So eventually, kalau you, you tahu tak, kalau sebenarnya kita jadi dekat Malaysia yang tak practice ni Kalau you belajar dekat, I tahu, uh, if you, contohnya kalau you belajar dekat Scotland ya eh, Macam like my friend belajar dekat um, Adibra Bila dia nak, dia nak buat proposal, uh, dia punya supervisor minta dia review artikel di top uh, A journal uh. Maksudnya bila dia nak develop dengan proposal tu, dia memang, dia suruh baca pada A, A journal je A, 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 A journal So triple A journal atau A journal ni semuanya Q1, Q2 So eventually, uh, this is where you nak dapat citation dan when we talk about quality citation, it's when we talk about uh, citation daripada orang luar uh, international, uh, international researcher who are cited in our world it, it doesn't promise your citation if your paper is not uh, not talking about ataupun not doing study yang recent study dan tak visible So eventually, uh, Dr. Anita Wati, you still have to play your part in uh, sharing your article. Make it uh, uh, acceptable. Yeah. Apa, saya, saya share few links, saya pun dah pening kepala ni. Banyak sangat. Okay, thank you. Dr. Gita. Thank you. Hey, thank you so much again, Ravis. Yes, thank you. I think yeah. I, I finish on time lah. Cukup masa untuk masak ni. Eh. Okay, Ravis. Yes, yes. yes. There's, there's, one question, there's one question on the box. I think uh, you didn't answer. Can I just repeat the question? Not by sure, me. Sure. What sure. is the what is your take on the issue of research gate and copyright? Okay, uh, that's good. I mean. Um, Uh, I met with a few uh, top editor in Sarawak during the QS conference. Yeah? So we did discuss on the research gate. Um, well, most of the editors are actually against this, uh, this, uh, uh, we say this uh, publications housing house. Yeah? So the publication house who doesn't let people to access their papers. So and based on the discussion, it seems that they they support research gate. Okay. And they 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 actually allow I mean the 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 authors to share with research gate, I mean but but then you need to make sure that um you need to set the sharing option in uh, to permission you need to give permission you can't share it openly. Oh okay. Because the copyright only uh, falls into uh, anonymous request, so actually. Uh, your paper can be shared to anyone if they requested it those days Dr. Gita we email our the author you remember we email the author hi sir i like i read your abstract and i would like to read the article yeah. to internet. yes so research gate come up with the with the with the platform that you, there is no need for you to send email you just request for the full text the author receive the notification and he allow you to to share so there is no issue of copyright So you don't put in the full paper, lah. In other words, you just. No, I, I put in my all my full paper in the research gate, but I opt Think. for request. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So the anybody who read, they they need to request. And then you send it, lah. Yes, and the best part for research gate is that they they have these online apps, phone, so I can share it very fast. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Gita. Thank you. Okay, I'm still here. If you have any question, nak tanya pasal PhD. Tadi ada tanya pasal PhD ni. Mana ada PhD tu pasal saya tak jawab. Kita dah keluar dah orang ni. Hmm. So PhD student better submit just three papers dia kata. What is, what is your experience? If we publish more, it is better for viral because the research has been commented. That's the reason why you can so go publish pun dalam journal. The reason why you want to know the quality of a paper. Tapi kalau you start publishing a lot more papers, you are practicing salami slicing, and it's actually not good lah. Because you are sharing the same input, the same data, the same uh, sample. 
into different type of paper yang sebenarnya it will look better if they been combined together in one solid article kan. So, orang doktor tap, doktor, first author or second author. Um, UITF ni bagus satu benda. Apa, first author or uh, apa tu? Uh, corresponding author. Uh, kalau student tu insist nak first author, so lecturer kan letak nama dia sebagai second author tapi corresponding author. So, sesiapa yang nak tanya soalan pasal paper tu, paper tu ditanya pada uh, pelajar, apa, pada pesyarah tu sendiri ataupun researcher. And, uh, siapa yang ada tinggal lagi ni, saya selalu suggest pada student saya sekarang ni, kalau you ada student, you letak dia double affiliation. Maknanya student tu katakan dia kerja dekat uh, kementerian ke apa. So, bila you publish paper dengan student, letak nama dia, uh, nama kata nama dia adalah Ali bin Ahmad, first affiliation University Tolong Jemara, second affiliation, letak nama kementerian. So eventually, a paper tu, weight, weight dia lagi bagus. Pertama siapa? Paper tu ada collaboration dengan industri. Ha, kan? So jangan, kadang-kadang student dia nak letak nama UITM ke tak? So tak apa, kita buat double affiliation. Maknanya dia ada dua. Dia adalah student di UITM. At the same time, dia bekerja dekat travel agent. Ha, paper industri ni besar weightage dia untuk Myra. Dan bukannya kita tipu pun memang betul pelajar kita tu bekerja di luar. So that's why macam contohnya macam pelajar master by coursework, dia tengah buat paper dengan master dengan pelajar. You submit paper tu, paper tu dah dah di review, comment semua, dah dekat 6 bulan baru you dah, dia kata okay nak publish this paper. Masa dia hantar you di uh, photo ready ataupun uh, copy copy editing punya uh, paper tu, you update lah dengan student you, eh sekarang dah kerja mana? Oh saya kerja dekat ada uh, yang di lecturer bukan dekat college, ah, tak nama college tu. Ah, Tapi kalau dia kata, oh saya dah kerja dekat apa nama hotel. Ah, tak nama hotel tu. Saya ada satu paper nama hotel. So, paper tu dah dikira sebagai paper collaboration dengan industri. Uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. So, do we have other comment lagi? Tak ada. Tak nurul okey ke? Tak dengar suara langsung. Okay. Index proceeding. Okay. Um, saya sebenarnya suka index proceeding ni. Pasal saya adalah antara orang yang suka buat conference. So bila nak buat conference dulu, uh, our international hospitality and tourism conference memang kita publish dekat pro, uh, index proceeding. Uh, pro, uh, index by ISI dengan Scopus. Dan cost dia very cheap. I mean, uh, we just need to pay around like uh, 170 US dollar per paper. But then, bila UITM dengan KPT, tiba-tiba tukar, apa, I mean, they, 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 they change the weightage of proceeding. Do you know that the value of proceeding is equivalent to 1 over 6 of Scopus paper? Maksudnya, kalau you nak dapat value satu-satu Scopus paper, you can publish 6 proceeding paper. That's why sekarang banyak conference, sekarang semua dah start publishing journal article dan ramai lupa, I mean I tak tahulah tapi my uh, conference masih lagi tak berani nak menjanjikan publication dalam Scopus Journal untuk paper proceeding. Tak boleh sebenarnya. Proceeding papers are not uh, uh, orang kata tak, tak boleh go for journal eh. Uh, so that's a problem right now. I think uh, kalau cerita pasal uh, CSSR pun Dr. Nurul boleh tahulah apa jadi macam mana, how, how, how Bukan senang. Uh, general editor dia, dia boleh reject je paper you. Uh, self citation. Again, saya dah beritahu hari tu. Uh, saya memang pro self citation. Sekiranya you are citing. You are citing uh, your work yang related to the thing that you write. Uh, bukannya you cite paper you suka-suka dan tak ada kena mana langsung. Uh, again, kenapa saya kata begitu? Why? Because most of my research yang saya buat, yang recent research adalah berdasarkan study yang saya buat dulu. Saya build up the ground, the groundwork saya dah buat, saya develop the theory, theory dah develop the framework. Now I'm using the same framework, test dekat different setting, different type of uh, tourist. So saya mestilah cite paper saya dulu. Kan? So that's that's why yang you kena you kena clear bahawa self citation tak salah. Yang salah ni banyak, dia satu paper dia, dia cite tujuh paper dia. So, bila paper dia naik, dia akan 
apa nama terus melompatlah dia punya citation untuk tujuh paper dia tapi do worry i mean most of the uh, matrix ya eh, general matrix ya eh, uh, bila you kira pun uh, that's why kita tak pakai google scholar hnet kita guna scopus ataupun um, web of science punya uh, index because dia orang eliminate dia orang buang the self citation punya uh, value which is actually good lah So again saya kata I'm not again self citation but proper citation kena ikut ruling citation. Citation bila you buat tu adalah bila you set paper tu. Okay bila you talk, talk about conference yang berindek dia macam ni konsep dia. Uh, conference organizer dia jual idea katakan uh, conference dia berindek sebagai so outside and scopus. Sebenarnya conference tu tak ada index. Conference tu you pergi you probably you, you present semua tu is conference biasa. Cuma Uh, proceeding tu katakan contohnya dia kita paper, paper you proceeding tu dia kumpulkan dalam proceeding dia akan hantar paper you tu ke uh, web of science ataupun scopus untuk di index dan biasa it takes like six month to nine months untuk paper tu di index uh, biasanya uh, jurnal jurnal yang berindeks ni contohnya dekat UITM eh UITM kita ada Dr Prof Yusuf Abbas dia banyak buat jurnal apa conference conference yang bagus ya eh? Kalau you remember dulu uh, conference Prof. Yusuf Abah ni dia publish kat Prosidia. Prosidia itu bukan jurnal. Prosidia itu ialah conference uh, yang apa uh, article index. And then selepas Prosidia tutup, uh, Prof. Yusuf Abah gunakan dia punya platform sendiri. Apa e-journal apa, uh, lupa dah. Cuma recently uh, Prof. Yusuf Abah punya conference ni dia index by way of sign. Cuma you kena clear uh, apa this uh, uh, conference Prof. Yusuf Abah ni still It is not considered as general article. It is considered as proceeding. Betul. Uh, if you are very very keen on apa, enhancing your Scopus paper atau Web of Science paper punya count dan juga H index, you publish kat proceeding. Cuma masalah dia bila kat fakulti macam saya, saya akan selalu push saya punya uh, researcher untuk go for journal. Kerana bila nak kira Myra, uh, di situlah masalah yang timbul. Kerana uh, Myra ada value proceeding tu very small. Uh, so memang, I mean, I mean, to get more marks, it is better for the paper to be enhanced and sent for a journal publication daripada conference. Uh, so clear, clear. Eh? Uh, I hope uh, you all are clear about the, with this conference. Uh, saya berani cakap because saya dah publish, uh, saya dah buat, saya adalah antara main organizer for Uh, 2012, 14, 16, 18 dan sepatutnya 2020 ni kat Bandung. So uh, kita dah publish 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, conference kita proceeding dia by Taylor and Francis dan index by uh, Scopus dan Web of Science. Memang keluar dalam Scopus paper-paper tu. Eh? Tapi lepas tu kita stop buat. Why? Because um, kita go for era publication. Uh, kalau tidak rugi, uh, kalau staff fakulti publish katakan uh, 60 paper uh, Myra tu value dia cuma 6 paper je, 6 marks uh, As compared to publish 60 paper dekat journal scopus dapat 60 markah So I, I think that's it lah, tapi I'm not against uh, paper publication, apa pergi proceeding, uh, proceeding publication is a good uh, input banyak bagus pada uh, scopus uh, punya profil. Ni ramai-ramai ni prof prof uh, prof Madia semua ni semua orang-orang hebat ni. Saya ni just to share uh, I mean uh, I'm not saying that my way is the right way eh. Ah uh, so caveat lah saya bagi tahu. I mean everybody have their own way of writing and uh, in my in my style saya saya suka dengan perbezaan dan I always embrace perbezaan. Era, era, uh, I don't know whether Myra yang baru ni tak, tapi sebelum ni memang era kita uh, accept for era, era apa Australia ni dan dia memang banyak membantu geng-geng social science uh, saya kira lah memang banyak uh, jurnal-jurnal dalam era tu tak di index dekat Scopus dengan Web of Science tapi uh, this, all this uh, dean council kat Australia tu highlight apa Identify this journal very good. So dia index lah. Cuma era ni masalah dia ialah dia tidak ada proper way to search kerana dia cuma bagi list journal tu dalam Excel file. So you kena browse through lah era journal macam ni ya. Okay, just to share. Uh, 
let me share kalau mungkin ada yang tak pernah dengar pasal era jurnal kan okey this is era jurnal ha ni era jurnal dia 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 punya database pakai excel you can download kat online ya yeah. so ni uh, you can search lah kalau you nak tengok apa contohnya um, area kan uh, you pilih lah area area ni banyak-banyak ni so katakan you nak tengok contohnya accounting so what i did is i just i just select ni Ha, dia keluar lah ni lah jurnal yang index by accounting So tengok sini, bukan semua, I mean Era ni dia punya disiplin ni terlampau besar sangat So banyak lah even for tourism journal pun ada More than 10 journal yang tak di index dalam Scopus or website yang dalam era Which is actually a good news lah untuk siapa-siapa nak publish Dan biasanya dia orang ni adalah independent publisher Oh, I, I think the new one lah kot. The, the new the new one. The new Myra Glossary. What you what is your take on conference paper as references? Oh, um, as long conference papers tak ada masalah. Actually, uh, do you know that? Uh, uh, general editor suka you all cite dengan paper uh, conference. Why paper conference ni bagus? Because uh, most of this conference, dia dia punya paper tu latest, isu yang latest. Yeah? So, biasanya banyak paper conference ni kita set dalam problem statement, isu. Uh, because ni paper-paper, isu-isu yang baru orang start baru nak buat. Yeah? Cuma, I mean, uh, you can be selective lah. Janganlah go for uh, journal-journal, apa, apa. paper tu kena ada quality. I mean, you are the one who read the article, you know the quality. Editor tak ada masalah. Uh, cuma again, you kena ingat bahawa editor akan tengok siapa yang you cite. Selain daripada pro conference proceeding, dia akan tengok uh, journal mana yang you cite. So kalau you publish in uh, accounting, you kena make sure that ada certification daripada top accounting journal. Uh, because they one ni kira macam gatekeeper lah. The key one journal, journal ni adalah gatekeeper kepada isu apa ataupun research yang you buat. Kalau dia publish dalam this key one journal, maknanya area yang you buat tu legit. You boleh publish. Dan dia orang, dia orang yang lain-lain ni Q2, Q3, Q4, dia akan follow lah abang dia. Kan? Dia dia nak, abang dia memang gatekeeper, the quality keeper, quality control jaga daripada Q1. So kalau Q1 accept your research area, you set banyak Q1, dia akan definitely publish you. Anyway, um, my, 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 my point of view ni banyak based on tourism, eh, tourism study eh, and economic study. I mean, um, kalau you tanya pasal um, IEEE, eh, IEEE, which is, it is actually a very good place for you to publish. Seriously. Cuma IEEE tu dia macam short communication lah, very um, very limited. So, bila social sign dulu pernah try to publish in IEEE, we fail to do that and IEEE pun tak nak terima kerja kita because um, most of social science study ni panjang sangat so they exceed the limit the five page the five pages kan right? so that's the reason why lah uh, Doktor oh. Oh, yeah. uh, can we get this recorded session? Okay uh, recorded session ni macam mana nak share pula <laughs> uh, I think kalau bila I tamat ni baru dia akan upload ke my google drive uh. Uh, and then I'll share it with Dr. Norul Jaya, I or I stop recording je. Eh. Hmm, dia tak boleh stop recording because dia memang Google Meet ni satu isu dia. Dia akan stop recording bila kita close the session and then dia akan upload to my Google Drive. Then I can share the link lah. Oh, okay, doctor. Ha. Nanti you contact Dr. Nurul lah. Ataupun kalau siapa ni add je saya dalam Facebook, nanti saya share link tu dalam Facebook. Oh, okay, doctor. Thank you. Ini di student ke lecturer ni? Ah, uh, student. Okay, okay. Good luck eh. PhD eh? Uh, degree. Oh, degree. Uh, uh. That's good. Uh, good for you. I, I mean, tadi I share kan, uh, I ada tiga, sekarang ni ada empat paper student degree yang uh, satu dah publish, satu dah accept, lagi dua tengah dalam review, reviewing stage. So, actually kalau you buat you punya final year project, betul-betul, I mean, it is publishable. InsyaAllah. Uh, memang uh, nak publish paper. Ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Uh, try to do that. I mean, it's good for your CV. Uh, at the same time, maybe orang kata boleh enhance your apa, 
opportunity to get uh, apa nama contohnya macam scholarship ke kan to mm-hmm. further your studies kan eh? oh great great Syahid great Syahid uh, don't worry you, I think kalau you duduk sit down with your with your supervisor actually I mean I've been publishing a lot of papers from masters by coursework and most of them are right now working as a lecturer dekat college-college lah So the best, the, uh, one of the yang most yang paling terbaru tu yang yang my student Shuhada tu paper dia publish kat Q1, terkejut dia. Saya pun terkejut. I mean I don't, I thought tak akan tak, jadi kan. Tapi yalah now she's working with uh, University of Wollongong, KDU Penang. Okay, nanti apa-apa kita jumpa lagi. Terima kasih. Assalamualaikum.